You know, the, the, if you guys really understand this whole concept of what a homologous chromosome pair is, meiosis is going to be easy for you, right? Now, bef before we do that, before we go on and take a look at the stages of meiosis, just like in mitosis, get the idea and then worry about the big words, all right? And, and, and the terms. And, and, and it'll all fit into place for you, I promise. I, we've established the fact that you need to do a, a, you need to visualize sexual reproduction as the combination of genetic material from a mother and a father. And you can visualize the fact that, that being said, you have to half the number of, half the amount of genetic material from the mother and the father. And therefore, you have to go from a situation where the gamete has half the number of, or half the amount of DNA, and the female gamete, if that's the male, the female gamete has to have half the number of, amount of DNA. The dilemma we run into is, which DNA do we send? You see? How much, we know we can send half, but how do we split up our DNA? And so we find out that in order to sexually reproduce, we have to explain this with this idea of homologous chromosomes. And it's not something we're making up. This is the way it works. You, as humans, have 46 chromosomes, actually 23 pairs. And here's the thing. What makes two chromosomes homologs? Well, let's come up with kind of a generic definition of homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that, control, that have genes on them that control the same traits, that have DNA that does the same job. Or homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that control the same functions. So, for example, if this, these are two chromosomes taken from my body, and this particular gene right here that I just detached is the gene for eye color, then its homolog in the exact same spot will have the gene for eye color. And since these chromosomes are doubled, which they normally aren't, remember they don't double until they're ready to replicate. I have, I'm removing the genes for eye color, you see? And so in active my, meiosis, I, I literally, because I have doubled chromosomes, have two each of these. That, so the point here is this, even if I were to make believe that my chromosomes only were single-stranded, like so, and I ignored the double strand part. Remember, this gene is homologous to this gene. This gene is homologous to this gene. Why? Because this chromosome is homologous to this one. I hope you're getting the feel for homologous chromosomes because if you are, the next thing I want to tell you about prophase of meiosis is going to be easy for you. And guess what? The rest of it is too. So. Got it, 23 homologous pairs, they work together. Or, like I said, if you're, a fruit, if you're, say, a wasp, five homologous pairs to give you a total of 10 chromosomes. Homologous pairs is everything. And understanding meiosis and eventually understanding genetics. Okay, so what's gonna happen? Well, here's the scoop. Meiosis is based on mitosis, evolutionarily. Mitosis came first. Therefore, if you guys know mitosis, and if you haven't learned mitosis yet, I want you to learn it. Because you gotta really understand mitosis before you understand meiosis. So become one with mitosis. If you're one with mitosis, let's go on. In mitosis, you remember the first thing that happened was you had a jumble of chromatin, and the chromatin went through supercoiling and formed doubled chromosomes. Ta-da. Okay. All right. And the chromosomes are tightly packed, genetic material around proteins, supercoiled, all that's fine, well, and good. And then in mitosis, you remember that we, we had to then line these up, and it was very simple. We split them. And that was the end of mitosis. But now we have a different story. Remember, we've established the fact that the first thing we have to do is somehow make sure that these homo homologous pairs split and get separated from each other by a cell membrane. That being said, you see anything wrong? Yeah, because it's based on mitosis, they're still doubled. So we're gonna have to go through two divisions in meiosis rather than one. And so this first phase I wanna tell you about is gonna be called 
prophase one. Hey, what do you know? We even use the same names. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And we could throw in a prometaphase if you want to, but we're going to use the same phase names. We're going to call them prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. What do you think comes next? Prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase. So again, mitosis, you get mitosis, you got meiosis. Let's see what happens in the first phase of meiosis.